the idea of Bronsted base catalysis is on some level the opposite of Bronsted acid catalysis. So rather than protonating the electrophile, the purpose in life of a Bronsted base catalyst is to deprotonate the nucleophile and thereby activate it. So for example, the deprotonation of a nucleophile that bears an acidic hydrogen, let's just call it HR, generates R-, and the conversion of a neutral nucleophile into a nucleophile with negative charge makes it a much stronger electron donor, increases its nucleophilicity. Put generally, we can say that bases activate nucleophiles, and this is the key role of a Bronsted base catalyst in a base catalyzed reaction. Let's return to the general example of a simple nucleophilic substitution reaction that we were working with previously. I'm going to make one small change in this example relative to the acid catalyzed case, and that's I'm going to add hydrogen to the nucleophile. In the uncatalyzed pathway, the nucleophile donates a pair of electrons to the electrophilic atom, and the EX bond breaks toward X. This is a simple SN2 elementary step. The resulting products contain a new nucleophile electrophile bond and a positive charge on the nucleophilic atom and the X minus group, the conjugate base of the leaving group. This is just a classic SN2 elementary step and it's uncatalyzed. One thing that we should notice about this is that what the reaction has done is turned two neutral reactants into two charged products. So one way to think about the uncatalyzed elementary step is that it involves charge separation. Introducing the catalyst, actually an acid or base catalyst, changes this situation as we'll see here in a second. And part of the reason the activation energy of the step is lowered as a result of the introduction of the catalyst is that we turn charge separation into something else. So now let's turn our attention to the base catalyzed process. Bases activate nucleophiles and they do so by deprotonating the nucleophile. So I'm going to represent the catalyst as a generic base B with negative charge. The catalyst can be a neutral base, but let's just use negative charge for this example. And in the first step of a base catalyzed process, deprotonation of the nucleophile takes place. The base removes a proton from the nucleophilic atom to generate the conjugate base of the neutral nucleophile. After this deprotonation step, what I call the business occurs, and in this example, the business is an SN2 elementary step. Here, the anionic nucleophile forms a bond to the electrophilic atom, and the EX bond breaks toward X. This forges the nucleophile-electrophile bond and generates X minus, the conjugate base of the leaving group. To complete the catalytic cycle, we have to regenerate the base and generate the H nu E plus product. And we do that by a proton transfer from the conjugate acid of the catalyst to what's going to become the positively charged product. So the nucleophile deprotonates the conjugate acid of the catalyst, and this step regenerates B minus so that it can return and react with another molecule of substrate and restart the cycle. And this step also generates the positively charged product. Notice in the base catalyzed pathway that we see a series of elementary steps that's similar to what we encountered in acid catalysis. In the first step, rather than putting a proton on the electrophile, we take a proton off the nucleophile. Once that proton has been removed, that facilitates or lowers the activation energy of what we might call the business elementary step. Here, it's an SN2 step. And then in the third step, to regenerate the catalyst and generate one of the products, we then put a proton back on the substrates. This is a general three-step pattern or dance, you might say, for Bronsted base catalyzed reactions. Proton off, something happens, proton on. And that cycle can repeat in base catalyzed reactions that involve multiple business elementary steps. Another important thing to notice here is that there is no longer charge separation within the mechanism. If we focus on what's going on within the catalyzed business elementary step, the second step, we see that instead of charge separation, what we're doing is charge transfer. Transferring the charge from the anionic nucleophilic atom to X minus, which appears in the products. So rather than charge separation, in the catalyzed process, we now have charge transfer. Because we're not pulling opposite charges apart from one another, this is a lower activation energy process than charge separation. 
and the same thing happens in acid catalysis. There, typically, rather than charge separation into positive and negative charges, we see positive charge being transferred rather than negative charge, which is more common in a basic context, as we see here.